superstar. He is an absolute superstar. Tom Mitchell hits at the back. Cripps is too good. Neil, 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 yes! Oh, how good was that? Lucky enough to see the great man over in Miami last year. It was, a, I think, it was a preseason game, New Orleans v Miami. He looked after us, got us down on the court. Do you have many friends ever that come from Australia to come watch you play and visit you? Because obviously you're away from friends and family a lot of the mm. time. But like, when do you get your your crew over to come and see you? Yeah, I mean, it was it was hard my rookie year because uh, the schedule came out so late. And uh, but I had my family come down for like Christmas, and they, they spent about a month with me. Had my friends come down. I had two of my friends come down for about two weeks, um, you know, in the new year. So that was good, but. I mean, it can be hard because, you know, you're traveling so much and, um, you know, it's hard to find, like, a good week home stretch where they can come, you know, just chill yeah. with you for a bit. But, uh, you know, there's always a lot of Aussies in the crowd, you know, yeah. coming down to watch games. So they got the Australian flag and yeah, whenever I see one, yeah, whenever I see one, I try to get, get to them and say what's up. But, uh, yeah. you know, seeing you boys at Miami, um, that preseason game. and That's right, you, know. you got us on the court and then you, t you were told us that the, the team might be going out and me and Flip were like, oh, maybe we just tie on the back of that. Yeah. yeah hang out with yeah. Zion for the night. <laughs> but um, we went our separate ways. I think you guys were flying to a new city, but how have you yeah. found the whole like NBA lifestyle? It's, you know, it's uh, relentless in terms of how much you guys travel, mm -hmm. always on the road. And uh, as you mentioned, a few challenges in your rookie season, but are you just used to it now? Yeah, I'd say I'm used to it now, but it's tough. You know, there's a, they have a thing called the rookie wall, which, uh, you know, I hit towards probably the 60 game mark of the season. And <laughs> hit the wall, did you? Yeah, hit the wall. Fatigue. Just <laughs> mental fatigue, physical fatigue, you know, everything. Yeah. It's just, uh, you know, it all comes crashing down on you at once and, you know, you're trying to perform, but you've just got a million things running through your head. So it's tough. It's tough. It's a long, long season, 82 games. Um, I had a lot of injuries, you know, through the, through the year. So I ended, only ended up playing about 55, but, um, you know, I think those injuries, you know, kind of helped me reset a little bit, but, you know, I'm definitely prepared for year two now. You know, I know, I know what to expect. It's a lot of travel, a lot of staying in hotels, a lot of, you know, media, all that sort of stuff, yeah. um, outside noise. So, kind of, you know, you just got to find your routine, lock in, and, um, you know, just, yeah, I think it's, it's all about routine and, you know, doing the same stuff over and over again, and, you know, that's how the great players, you know, play a long time. What yeah. does what, what does a typical week look like, say, if you've got two to three games in a seven-day period is that sort of how it normally looks and then the travel aspect and um, having a shoot around like how does it and then your prep and your recovery like run us through sort of how that actually it's uh works. yeah a week it's a uh, different every week because you know sometimes you might be home for a week and uh if you're home for a week it'll be like a game you know practice day game practice day game could be a back-to-back -back. it could be a you know a, a game in in new orleans at night imagine if it's yeah like when it's uh, you got two home games in a row or three. It's like you can sort of, you s you've half sort of got a normal life sort of staying in the same place for a period of time. And then if you're on the road, it's three schedule, weeks, it? Like they give like you like a stretch of home, then a stretch of away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's different. Like we we had a, a two week stretch at home at one point. We had a two week stretch on the road at one point, and then there's like a I think in might have been January we had a a 30 day stretch where we played 18 games. So you know we had our you know, there's weeks where you have back-to-backs, you know, you might play in New Orleans one night, and then, you know, you've got to go fly down to LA and play there the next night. So it's a it's a tough schedule, and, uh, you know, you you have harder months, you have easier months, you have easier weeks, you have harder weeks. So it's really just different, you know, every time. But, you know, if you're losing a few games in a row, you know, the coach might be putting pressure on you, and yeah. you might be practicing the next day, or, um, you know, if, you, if you're on a good winning streak, you know, you might have lighter days uh, after your game. So, you know, every week's different, but, um, it's very, very taxing on the body. Yeah, and you've got some great examples, as you mentioned. You know, you sort of figure it out on the run, what the more mature and older players are doing. You've obviously been teammates with Brandon Ingram, CJ mm -hmm. McCollum, Zion Williamson. Maybe we start with Zion. Um, what, what can you learn from someone like him who's obviously, you know, off the scale in terms of his popularity and how big he is as an athlete? And I'm sure uh, with his strengths and sizes, things he does to prepare to play at an elite level, what have you picked up from him? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously Zion is a great player. Um, you know, he's had his fair share of injuries, but, you know, he's one guy that, you know, really does take care of his body and really puts the work into his body. And um, being, you know, that size and, you know, moving like he does, you know, injuries are going to happen. But um, just the way he carries himself, you know, with the outside noise and all the people putting pressure on him is, uh, is you don't see that very often because, you know, he's just getting bashed all the time, bashed, yeah. you know, put down. And, uh, 
you know, just the way he carries himself, brings himself in uh, every day with a smile on his face, you know, good energy. You know, and you need that around the locker room. You need those type of guys. And, um, you know, we have a really good, uh, you know, older group of guys that, you know, that, that help him out and, you know, help each other out. And, um, yeah, like CJ, you know, Garrett Temple, Larry Nance, these guys who have been in the league a long time, they're, they, um, they're really good at, you know, being a, a vocal leader and, you know, talking to us, you know, talking, like, just, just giving us advice on, you know, what it's like to be in the NBA and, you know, how we can better ourselves and, you know, be better um, with routine, you know, eating habits, you know, all that sort of stuff. So that was one thing that I, I was uh, really happy with in New Orleans was uh, the veteran leadership that we have. Yeah. Can you imagine that, Flip? Like, cool. we, you know, in footy, you know, every now and then you'll have things written about you and but, but when you compare the scale of the NBA to the AFL, like, that's within Australia, within the footy bowl of Melbourne, then you've got, say, athletes like Zion he's talking about. Mm. Like, yeah. everyone in the world knows everyone's business and... So it'd be so tough. I was going to say, like, after, you know, AFL players play an average game or, you know, there's, there's probably some, um, some hate messages or, mm. you know, someone out there potting you, having a go. Like, as a, and as you say, like, it's, it's, it's a, it, you know, it's a, we're big fishes in a, in a small pond, really. But then in the, in the NBA and the, the US, there's a lot of sport going on. The market's massive. Like, for yourself, yep. um, do you, like, do you have people like to make sure you do your job really well obviously you'd have a, a big support crew and a big sort of team behind you with you like your social media and that sort of stuff do you yeah. all right do you look at comments much or you know news and that sort of stuff after you play a good game a bad game or do you sort of just roll on to the sort of yeah next? yeah i see everything and i, I think it's funny you know uh yeah. the, the world we live in today we have sports uh gambling and stuff like that and i'm sure yeah. you guys have experienced it if you're if you don't, you know, get someone's multi for them, then they're going yeah. to let you know about it. So. <laughs> Funny you yeah. say that. My whole DMs in the request section 25 is plus if you don't get it. 30-year-old males yeah, plus yeah. abusing yeah. you because you didn't get a touch to get their multi well, or well, Can you get back to them? You say, I'll hey, guys, how are you? Yeah. I actually <laughs> reply to some of them sometimes. All they want is a reply and then yeah, they switch yeah. up on well, you. Well, they quit, normally back down. Well, if you reply, yeah. then they go, oh, sorry. They're like, surprised, right? Yeah. They probably wouldn't go, oh. Dyson's actually, exactly. how's he got back to me? They, they don't, don't expect, expect a reply. And then they no. get a reply, they're like, oh shit, oh, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. I didn't know <laughs> what they to say go, that. Yeah, They're always actually really nice after yeah. that. Yeah, but no, I had a game against LA. Um, it was like my eighth game of the year. And uh, we were up three points uh, with like two seconds left. I had two free throws, needed to make one, the game's over. I missed both, they grab a rebound. They, uh, they go down, they go down, they call a timeout, they go down the other end, call up a play. No, they hit like a fadeaway three from the corner. We got to overtime. We lose that game. My phone after that was <laughs> off for at least two weeks. Oh, like my my parents were getting death threats. My brothers were getting messages, oh, like no. all that sort of stuff. And um, you know, that was that was it was tough, but it was good for me just to you know learn like what it's like. And um, you know, obviously it was it was hard because you know I basically lost us that game. You know, I just needed to make one free throw and it was it was over. So it was hard. But my teammates were really good with supporting me and yeah. my coaching staff and. You know, we have a really good, you know, family organization that, you know, is always going to be there for you. So it was tough, you know, having that. But after two weeks, I started getting back to some of the people <laughs> yeah. and they, yeah, they, they yeah. forgot they about that switch up. So, um, but yeah, no, at the end of the day, it's all good fun and games. So and, as, as a player, how many people do you actually have in your professional team? So outside of the club environment and the team for you, yeah. yourself, you know, your, your management, um, you know, your hobbies and interests outside of basketball, social media, like... What, Daniel what does, Moldovan, shout out. Yeah, shout yeah out exactly. Daniel. Yeah. And what, what does it all sort of look like for you from, from that angle? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people, um, you know, I have my agent, obviously, but in my agency, I have, like, a lot of people who I can just go to for help. I have my, my manager now um, that I live with, and I also have my, my close friends that I can go to for stuff, you know, like my financial advisor. Um, I got, like, people in New Orleans, like, that can just help me set up with, like, restaurants and stuff like that. So... You know, that's, a, that's one benefit that you do get from, you know, being in the NBA is just like everyone wanting to help you. And, um, you know, some people are going to want stuff in return, but some people just do it out of good nature. And, you know, you gotta, you got to find those people because, uh, you know, like I said, it can be a long season, it can be physically taxing, mentally taxing, and you just want some of those people to, you know, help you out sometimes. So it's a, it's a small circle, but it's also a good circle that, you know, has a lot of, a lot of people they can go to to contact if you need something. And um, just like... You basically have someone for everything you need. So, I've been yeah. fortunate enough to do a fair bit of travel to the States and with you a little bit, obviously. And there was one year where I met KD, Kevin Durant, mm. and that was unreal. It was when he was at the Warriors. Steph was there as well. You were talking off air before about how they, you know, the team does their pregame shoot around the night before a game. Uh, sorry, the morning of the game. So they, yeah. they'll do it in the morning that night. 
Anyway, I chatted to KD. He said his biggest thing in his life was having people around him that he could trust. And that's why he said his circle was so small because he's like, as bad as it sounds, a lot of people were just trying to get things from him, mm. you know what I mean? And, and weren't real genuine people. So he, he sort of explained like, you know, he kept his circle so close because he can't afford to open himself up, which mm. is pretty sad, but it's, um, it, it makes a lot of sense because you know, people want to get to, to guys in that position. So uh, yeah, it sounds like you've got a great, great circle around you, which is yeah. awesome. What about, um, what about in terms of away from basketball, like with the schedule that's so full on, what do you do to get your mind away from it? Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I love gaming, I yeah. love DJing. Um, you, you got your yeah, own decks? I got my own decks, so you know, that's uh, something that I can just go to to take my mind off, off of things. And um, you know, I want to start making beats and stuff like that. True. And you know, BR Brandon Ingram on my team, he's a, he, he does that sort of stuff, makes beats, make, makes music. So you know, I'm going to go to him and you know, learn off him. He's got his own studio and stuff. So um, you know, I, I love music, so yeah. that, that kind of just takes my mind off that's things. Cool. But, um, yeah, otherwise I'll just be chilling on the game. Xbox, you know, watching, PlayStation? Uh, PlayStation, watching nice. footy highlights, yeah, Tommy Mitchell we'll highlights. So, <laughs> but uh, no, it's, uh, it's good fun, but you know, basketball takes up so much yeah. of my day that you don't yeah. really get that much time off. But when I do, I just, I like to relax. And, you know, what what sort of music are we talking? Hip hop, R&B, yeah. uh, I like Afro beats, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I like uh, different genres, different moods, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. depending depend on what I'm feeling. Yeah. We'll get you a set at the Emerson, we'll tear that up. Exactly. <laughs> we'll come watch. Yeah. Oh. Get me on the decks, Tom. Yeah, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> There's a few, that's become more popular, I reckon, with like, uh, I know one of our teammates, CJ, in the past, and like there's more yeah. um, athletes that are, yeah. you know, into their music yeah. naturally and sort of looking at. I reckon we have a real skill set to have. Yeah. Imagine just, well, you can do it, you can play deck. Yeah, everyone can, oh, well, not not great, but you know, like mix. You're better than the average it, it, Mixing is a little bit different yeah, to yeah. Um, creating your own yeah, music, yeah. right? And, yeah. and actually the art of that. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. that's the next step and that's, oh, it's pretty cool. But, yeah. 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 So um, yeah, we, we asked about, so footy as well. So you're a Tigers man. Tigers man, big Tigers Obviously man. we can't get you to the pies. It's a bit nah. too late for that. But um, how'd you get, I, I, how did you get Giddy to the pies? You just told. I don't know, mate. Yeah, I don't know how I did that actually. I've never seen so someone switch up like that. He's jumped, he's jumped on board, which was good. Well, when I first met Gids, it was obviously because he was Hawks. Yeah, and we yeah. took him through the facility at Hawthorne. And then I think just because Colin was just on this wave at the moment, he, he wanted to jump on the wave. So we've been hooking him up with some tickets. You guys are obviously coming to the game tomorrow night. Yeah, I'll Carlton, be there. That'll be huge. Um, be there in my Tigers jersey. Yeah, you'll wear your Tigers jersey. You'll come Collingwood. You get some yeah. weird looks there. <laughs> um, so growing up, you spoke about how you had you know footy, basketball. Obviously, very into your sport. Mm -hmm. um, when did you make the decision, and why did you lead to basketball in the end? Yeah, I I um. I always played a lot of sports growing up, soccer, footy, basketball, bit of cricket. Um, and, you know, I think it was, I did basketball and, and footy for about, you know, eight years until I was about 15 years old. And, um, you know, I had to make a decision because I had an offer to go to the AIS. And it was either I take that and uh, I have to drop footy after that or I, I continue to, you know, play both and, you know, make a decision later. But um, I knew that basketball was the right choice for me. Um, but I, I didn't want to give up footy. I, I really love footy, so that was a tough decision. But uh, come play I'm, with us in your off seasons. Exactly. I Cat wanna, category B rookie. Yeah, get him in. Where would yeah, you play? Yeah. yeah. But no, I always uh, say like if rock, I, he can play me. If, if, if basketball doesn't work out for some reason, I'd love to come play footy. Yeah. Um, yeah so that. definitely, um, you know, I definitely love my footy. I always watch my footy. I used to, you know, sit sit on the like make a bed on the ground at home and watch the games from like 140 to 750 and not move, so. Did you ever get um, to any of the Tigers grand finals? I've never been to a grand final before, nah. We, but, we um, have to go, when do you have to go back to the States this year? I gotta go back, uh, October like or September? September, September. Yeah, but I'll be, just miss it. Yeah, I, I, I'm gonna just miss it, so. Yeah. Uh, I would love to get to a grand final one day, yeah. uh, just the environment, but uh, you know, I definitely had big parties when the, when the Tigers were in the finals, for yeah, sure. 100%. You they said you, run, you grew up um, with some current AFL players as well and played yeah. footy with and against them. Who were some of those? Yeah, I played, uh, you know, like with the, the under-12 Victorian team, I played with uh, guys like Ben Hobbs, Campbell Chester, uh, Josh Ward. Um, played basketball with, like, Marcus Winhager. Played basketball against, like, Jamara Ugelhagen. Yeah. Um, and there's so many from that team that, that I'm gonna leave out, but like you know, I play with a lot of the, these guys now, so it's to see them succeeding in, in their sports pretty cool. Um, you know, their, their friendships that I'm gonna have for life for sure. I reckon you made the right call going the NBA. Mm. 
If you can go top 10 pick of the NBA, you're taking that any day of the week. Yeah, I think so. You would pick eight, yeah. I think it was? Yeah, pick eight. I'll pick yeah. eight. Talk yeah. to us about draft night because obviously AFL draft night's a bit different. Um, probably the top 10 are in the in the venue when they're releasing the names and then everyone else is watching on TV. Yeah. If you go top 10 in the NBA, that's like a worldwide event. Mm-hmm. You suited up. I can't remember what color did you wear? What color suit? I was like a, like a, like a gray with like 10, like it was like, looked like, Tim, whatever they call from Dorothy, that Tin Man. Tin yeah. Man. Were you happy with yeah. it? I was, uh, so basically when I choose my suit, I have like a little piece of, like little piece of fabric to like look at. So look it's at like kind of hard yeah, yeah. to see what, what it was going to, what it was going to turn out like. But uh, I was happy with how it was, you know, it was definitely controversial. You know, some people loved it, some people hated it. So, um, but you know, it's, you get one, sh- one shot at it. So you want to, you want to stand out. Um, yeah, draft night was, you know, it was huge and, um, you know, being in New York, you know, you're there about four days before, which is... Is every draft just, in New York or just this one? Yeah, they're all in New York. All in New York. They're yeah. all in New York. So it's at our Barclays Centre, so Brooklyn's yeah, arena. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a huge build-up. You know, you have mm. a good four or five months of just pre-draft stuff and working out, yeah. media attention, all, all that stuff. So and things. Exactly. Do you chat to, like, every... Well, what's that four to five months build-up like? You know, like, yeah. is it chatting to every single team or only ones that are interested? Is it... Like, how does that all sort of work? Contracts, yeah, I finances. Mean, it's uh, so the first two two months of that five months is about just getting in shape, building your body, you know, getting um, yeah, getting ready, and then um, you know, you start team workouts will start about two months before the the draft, and you know they'll invite you to come work out, and then uh, you know, in that two month period, there's also the draft combine, so uh, you go to that, um, you do all your testing and. You sit down with interview. Like I, I think I had twenty interviews, so I did twenty teams, um, and yeah, and then I w- ended up working out for seven teams. And you kind of know the range that you're going to be picked at, mm-hmm. so your agents make calls on who who you want to go work out with. And you know, one, if you're a higher pick, you know, you kind of get a little bit more say in you know yeah. whether you want to go to a team or not. But yeah. um, at the end of the day, the, the team, if they want to pick you, that they'll pick you. But yeah. you see, in in today, some some teams just won't pick players because they just don't want to go there. Yeah. And um, but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a big build up, and you know, draft night especially, you have everyone there, your close circle, and um, you know, after my draft, I was just exhausted. I had the biggest headache ever, so I just uh, I went to my draft party, and I was there for like thirty minutes, went back, and went <laughs> to sleep. Out. So it's just a huge build up, so uh, fatiguing, mentally fatiguing, but it's uh, it's definitely very fun and um, very stressful. Which uh, which other team? Sorry, uh, you go. Okay, you go. Okay. Yeah. Which other teams did you think you were going to go to? Like. Obviously, Pelicans must have shown a lot of interest, but who yeah. was around the ballpark? You're like, I'm going to go there, or I think I'm going to go here. Yeah, I mean, a lot of teams showed interest in me, so I was like very unsure on the draft night. Like yeah. some people will know, like I got a promise from the team, I'm going there, but I had no promises, but I had a lot of interest, yeah. and uh, it was around the six to ten mark. So I think six was Indiana, seven was Portland, eight New Orleans, nine San Antonio, and ten Washington. So I kind of knew I was going to fall in that range, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, you, you know about two minutes before the draft, all of the cameras will come to your table and you know that that's True. where you're going. So that's it's cool. pretty cool that moment. That's but um, you know, I was definitely happy to land in New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting, like, um, how you said that sometimes the, the teams won't pick you if the player doesn't want to go there. But then mm. in the AFL, teams can pluck, you know, a, a Gold Coast team or a West Australian team might pluck a Victoria. Yeah. Mm. And that player might not want to go, but the team goes, nah, yeah, yeah, like, too. yeah. On the flip side like of that, sort of with the trade stuff, so obviously in the NBA, it's like, you're so disposable. Correct. Yeah, with our yeah. contract. Yeah. yeah. Say, you know, I can, if, say, for example, Collingwood wanted to trade me, or, you know, if, if, that, if you're in that situation, you can say no if he's contracted. So you have a bit more power in that, in that regard. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I guess we've all been traded, except I know, this I know there's <laughs> something this year, isn't there, with like the, the number one pick, was a Harley, well, Harley there's Reed? speculation yeah. on Harley whether, because he's Victorian, will he yeah. go to West Coast to have pick one? You would think, or uh, you know, will, or who's second? Th- who's second bottom? North? North. Yeah. Or do they think yeah. that he'll stay there for two years and want to come home, and then they've got nothing? Like because they, they did that. Horn Francis said he didn't want to play here anymore. And yeah. Well, that's home. a prime example. So you stayed yeah. for one year and left. So you don't probably want that, do you? No. You want to keep your number one draft pick. Yeah. So, yeah. so you pick. You pick a pick. Four or five that's sort well, of you can, homegrown. You can split your pick Local. one, you might trade it to another team, get yeah. a number of picks. Yeah. Um, the World Cup's coming up soon as well for basketball. Yep. That's going to be sick. Yeah. Um, we, cool. got a, we got a good squad. Well, you guys are heading to Kansas, you said, to, to prepare for that. Yep. That's coming up. And yeah. then 
who, who do you think are the countries that, obviously USA, who are they bringing out in their team and then who are some other countries who you know, we think we'll be competing with? Yeah, um, you know, obviously we've got World Cup, you know, we've got a squad of 18 now and we'll get cut to 12, so hopefully make that team and uh, I'm sure it'll be a competitive training camp because mm -hmm. Australia's got a lot of good players right now and a lot of players that are, you know, are capable, capable of making that team and I think, um, I think USA is probably the favourites by a little bit, but you know, we're up there, Canada's up there, you know, Spain, Spain Serbia, yeah. France, that those guys are always up there. Slovenia with Luka. I saw Jokic uh, isn't playing. He just yeah. announced that. Yeah. Jokic isn't playing, but Serbia is always always a tough team, yeah, yeah. no matter no matter who they put out there. And um, you know, USA has gone with a bit of a different look this year. They've they've gone a lot younger, uh, but I mean, they're, they're still talented players. Like I think their lineups like Anthony Edwards, Tyrese Halliburton, like Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, I mean, they got they just yeah. got a lot of young talent, which uh, I think that's a lot scarier than you know playing with the, yeah. those veterans like you know KD and yeah. Well, those know, guys will probably play together, won't they? Exactly. As a team. Exactly. Do you reckon that's no, going to be a bit? No egos. Is that going to be a bit of a trend? Do you reckon with the US moving forward at that level, like playing a bit more of a younger crew compared yeah, to? Yeah, I think it, I think it might be. Team? I think it might be. And yeah. actually, I don't think I don't think it's like planned that way. I just you know right. USA people they'll put their hand up to play or, or they won't. And, uh, you know, a lot of the guys have already played and won their gold medals, and you know that's what they want to do. So yeah. it's kind of the younger wave coming through now. But I mean, the younger wave is is just as tough as the the older wave. You know, these guys, I think three, four of those guys just got offered max contracts. So you know, they're, they're still very good players, and uh, they know they know how to play. So uh, they'll be tough. But Canada's a, a team to look out for. They got yeah. a who's they got who, a lot of good. Who are some NBA household names from Canada? Canada, they have uh, Jamal Murray. They got SGA. They got Jamal Murray Canadian. Yeah, Lou Dort. Um, they got like Kelly Olynyk. Uh, they got a lot of young guys that like Ben Matherin, like Shaden Sharp. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if those guys are playing, but you know, they, I think they got a full roster of NBA people, yeah. so they'll be tough. And then those European teams are always tough as well, so yeah. it'll be a good World Cup. So looking forward uh, to have it. Have you been able to do much travel outside of the US and Australia, sort of outside of? Uh, I've been to I've been to Spain. Yeah. I've been to like Latvia uh, for a World Cup. Um, but other than that, not really. I want to get uh, to Greece next off season. Uh, Mykonos. Mykonos. That's you next off season. Looks like the, <laughs> looks like the get place. Get your decks. Get your skills sorted by then, and I want to see videos of you popping up playing at decks at, at Namos yeah. and Mykonos. <laughs> my, uh, my explore page right now is just filled with you know, beautiful Mate, women. All your mates, so. And all your mates in all Europe. My mates. Like all my mates are there. Yeah. yeah. Might have to get in a little McLovin card, actually. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> all, all, um, all the boys we, got we went, We did a footy trip to Greece last year. Yeah. We can give you some spots. Yeah, yeah you, you go I, need to, I need to get out there next off season. So. 100%, 100%. Sure. With the World Cup though as well. Um, so Superboost, who sponsor our podcast, I'm not sure if you've seen Superboost before. Mm -hmm. Flip obviously have a bit to do with, to do with Superboost, but also sponsoring the team. What, what, what's the go there, Flip? With yeah, you? well, I mean, Have you tried those before? Dice? Yeah, I, I have not. Well, we, I have should, not. We, we, can have a, we can have a try. Give, give him a... Because uh, I was going to ask you who your favourite teammate Aussie, Aussie teammates are at Aussie the moment. teammates? Um, oh, because Paddy and yeah. Joe, Paddy Mills, Joe Ingalls are in Subarus. Oh, okay. So yeah, you can give them some Involve, which is... Open it up, give it a go. Great. Yeah, have it. So but hopefully you get some... Um, mango? Throughout yeah. the training camp, um, some of these. So are you guys hopefully. sponsoring... Sponsoring the team? Yeah, we're going to be... We're going to be getting some product um, to the boys and then hopefully... That's good. It's like a... Yeah. On the road. I've had, plenty, I've had thousands of these. We, all the Collingwood boys drink these as well. Right. It's like a... It's kind of like a fruitier, like... Powerade kind of thing. Yeah. What's your favourite time of having these I, so in the day? Well, when, do you, I, when do you normally consume them? I, a few of the guys have been bringing them to games and having it at half time. Yeah. So Port Adelaide on the weekend. Like sort of in and around maybe that was match the day. We, maybe that was the reason we won the game. Port Adelaide at half time, came out after half time. Well, you haven't, I don't, I don't reckon since, since having them more regularly, you probably haven't lost too many games. Yeah. The lads That's seem good. to be powered by it. Yeah, it's good. It's hey. really good. Boosted by it. Yeah. Not also, by it. I like to have it. Probably as like a hydrating before a game rather than rehydrating yeah. after a game, you know what I mean? So I'll have one before a game, normally. I've got a box for dice as well. You can have the blue one after. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, um, pretty, they've got a pack full of electrolytes, which is good. You drink so these at the AFL? Yeah, well, so all, all, all the Collingwood boys are on these at the moment. Right. I don't know, like Powerade and Gator, I think, sponsor the AFL. Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm going to get in trouble saying what I'm saying, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, Gatorade oh, does, yeah, do yeah, yeah, not power rated. Um, yeah. yeah, all us guys been drinking these because we find it's not as like sugary, yeah, easy to digest and stuff. Yeah. No, the best thing about them as well, outside of the match days and the training, is the performances after we all go to the Emerson on Saturday. I was we'll say, probably need one of these on Sunday like a, morning. End, end of the year, 
Where's you know time for tequila a tequila super boost? Yeah, yeah. Say, little vodka, vodka, vodka soup. Vodka super boost. Yeah, vodka soup. Yeah, I think, I think yeah. that could be us. Yeah. Maybe that's us in New, New Orleans in a few. Yeah, a few that months. Go down Bourbon Street, have a few vodka super boosts. Post game with the lads. How good would that be? Yeah. What about like so? Oh, actually, we got to get to this. So we we've been chatting a bit, and Dice. He knows his footy well, like obviously big on his tigs, mm. watches games when he's back home, when he gets a chance, went through the tigs uh, facility, I think, been to a fair few games. Uh, come to the Collingwood game tomorrow, but uh, we're actually going to get him to the rooms tomorrow, so I'm still working on getting him to the pies, we'll work on that. <laughs> but I want to test his AFL knowledge with numbers, because we've seen Giddy go to work, and your kids are pretty close. Yeah, I've seen, I seen a video of him, he, uh, he got them all, did he get them all right? I think most of them. Pack. So we've got a few footy packs here, I'll, I'm going to take one, you take another. Yeah. We'll show him the player and then see if he can get the number. Yeah, Because okay. yeah. I, yeah. I reckon, from what I can gather, he's going to be pretty good. But Josh is pretty good. So it's do you guys, time. like, when you run into the Aussies, say, like, OKC's okay, so playing uh, New Orleans, do so you guys catch up? Yeah. I mean, we, me and Josh are very close. You know, we, we work out nearly every day together. So, you know, we, we've been close for years. So um, I've just seen the been. first card. And it's what someone he's mentioned. So we'll give, you, give him an easy one to start. Because I reckon it's I've got the numbers on the back here. Yeah. Well, oh, actually, is that the number? That's a bit of a tough one. No, no, that's all right. That's all right. We're good. Nah. We're good. All right, right. Let me just double check this. Yeah, we're good. All right. This is, you're going to know this. I hope. He's one of your mates, so. I can't see you. So it's, it's, it's Josh Ward. Oh, Josh Ward is uh, 25. Yeah. 25. 25. One from one. What we'll go that? through my deck first. I want to I want to see how much footy he's been watching. Um, People, have, there's been a few movements though. So yeah, true. What movements. about? Well, this is tough. I actually don't know most of these. You changed number, didn't you? I'm six now. Yeah. I was three at Hawks. I, I'm so much better with um, older numbers than modern than current day players. What about Steve Cornelio? Three. Yeah, two from two. We've spoken about this guy. CJ. CJ. Uh, is he number one? No, he's single digit though. Yeah. He's a... Uh, you can pass. Yeah, I'll pass. All right. Four maybe? Who's four? Uh, Jars is four. Yeah, yeah. Jars is four. Yeah. CJ's nine. Yeah, I'm off. Um, Jake Stringer. 25. That's pretty good. Ben Brown from Melbourne. Ben Brown, 50. Yeah. Uh, this guy? I think he'll get that. Hey, Crips. Nine, nine. Crip hasn't, we haven't spoken to each other all week. Obviously, Carlton Collingwood. Oh, yeah, so a little... All making stuff yeah. together. Normally, the, in the lead-up to this game, everyone just... The group chat just goes a bit quiet. <laughs> I think he's playing. I think he's, he had a really bad corky. I think he's playing, though. Give us your top five favourite Richmond players of all time. So... All time? And, yeah, so go... Number one's your favourite, and yep. then give us your top five. I've never done this with footy. Uh, yeah. Number one is Dusty. Yeah. Uh... Number two is uh, I love watching Liam Baker play. Liam gun. Baker. Uh, three. I, I'm very. I, I'm more into the like the newer guys. I don't, I don't know much. What about George? Jace Castagna. Can't believe oh, he yeah. retired. Good what a man, uh, Good big George. Yeah. I would say number three would be. Uh, I love Boston. Nick yeah, Boston. Tough. He actually yeah. um, broke my rib one game. This little cheeky one off the ball. And then the next time we played him, he cleaned me up again. He's like, he came up to me mid game and goes, Hey man, I'm sorry. I don't know why I always go for you. I just, I'm going to stop doing that. I'm like, Yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, he had the awareness to, yeah. to come well, up. He, and... he, you know when you just nail someone in the spot? Yeah. No, I don't you know. Got, I don't know. This is like feeling. 2016, ages ago. Yeah. But Number four, I'm going to put the big marriage, the big mullet. Oh, the um, marriage. How is that guy going? Who, where, where is that guy at? Who is now? that? Ivan Marek. Oh, yeah. Ivan yeah. yeah. Uh, he, I don't know where he is. What's his story? He's been coaching know? somewhere, you know? or just brushing his. What is his? What is his toy story? What about um, three people yet to invite to a dinner? Did in the whole life? world? Yeah, in history. Um, Daniel Moldovan. Daniel Moldovan. Josh He'd be the last one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm gonna say, if I want some business tips, I'm gonna get uh, Elon Musk. If I'm a, if I'm gonna take an artist, I'm gonna get Jay Z, and. I want a, a nice, beautiful lady. <laughs> <I'll> say, <laughs> uh, give me 
Beyonce. It's Beyonce and Jay Z. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll fun. come together anyway. Yeah. Oh. What about this? Is just a stock standard one, but we have to do it. Top five, starting five of all time, NBA. All I'm sure time. you've done this before. Yeah. I like to put Steph at my one. Yeah. I always think Steph's at my one. Uh, two, I'm going to go with MJ. Three, I'm going to go with LeBron. Four, I'm going to go with Tim Duncan. And five, I'm going to go with Kareem. Good five. Yeah. You're you're relatively tall. How tall is like a Steph Curry compared to you? And then he's a, like a, a LeBron or something. Right? I mean, he's he looks small, but he's like six three, six four. Yeah. So I mean, he's a but he's strong. Like he's very strong. Um, Have you guarded him? I've guarded him. How'd you find he that? Just, he definitely one of the toughest players to guard. I uh, I was on him for about five possessions and and I was dead after that. He just run around, run must around. Must be so fit. Yeah, they got because they, they, I think one of the possession they got three offensive rebounds. And like I just had to fight him every time. He's just running, running. You know, he like run into the basket, just stand there, take off again. So he's like he's just unique the way he plays. No one else plays like him. Yeah. And uh, so you're not used to guarding those type of guys. So if you relax for a little bit, he's already gone. He's in the corner. So it's a tough. And I'm sure the offense is all run around him. So exactly. and he knows where his his screen's going to be, and he's just zipping around. That's right. He yeah. knows he knows where his screen's going to be. His teammates know where where he's, he's going to be. So he's definitely uh, very hard to guard. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Team defense. We've got the perfect Boy, person in the seat. For superstar the defender. Team. Who did you watch growing up? Like, who was like, because obviously, you're, you're su- like, probably I assume draft the top 10 because you're a great defensive yeah. player and offense has really come along as well. Yeah. Defensive can lock down anyone. Mm-hmm. Who did you watch growing up? Because I guess, as you know, young aspiring athletes, everyone looks at the offensive juggernaut, like your Steph Curry, the guys that can yeah. shoot. But I'm sure you've got, you've got those guys, but also guys that are defensive lockdowns that can do what you can do so yeah. how did you attack that yeah i've always uh you know i study a lot of defenders and uh two guys that come to mind is mikhail bridges and drew holiday yeah um and another one i look at is marcus smart as well uh these guys like just the instincts they have like you know, i think defense is it's a lot about you know heart and hustle but um it's a lot about having good instincts as well just being able to read the game and you know i think people have an offensive license to go do whatever they want and uh, yeah. people have a defensive license and you know, I have my, my defensive license, so I'm able to, you know, gamble, go for steals and stuff like that yeah. because, you know, that's kind of how, how I play and how, how I, um, you know, get my buckets. So, you know, I, I definitely, you know, study, like, those three guys the most. But, um, you know, I think it's important to, you know, study defenders as well of us yeah. offensive players. So. If, if you weren't playing basketball, what do you think you'd, you'd be wanting to be a DJ or footy. a firefighter footy first. or a footy or footy what, first. what would you be doing? Um, yeah. Be if the it's rocket not, Collingwood. Yeah, <laughs> if it's not footy, I'd uh, definitely be something in the music industry. Industry, you know, uh, school wasn't for me, so it wouldn't be anything <laughs> smart. Something wise. sport related. Yeah, something yeah. sport related or, or music or something like that. So. Okay. How, how tall are Ruckman usually in the What football? are you? Six eight. Six seven. You'd, you'd probably be an undersized ruck. Undersized oh. ruck. What is that? One ninety. One, that's 202. Yeah. No, it's 202. I'm, I'm, I'm about 6'8 now, I think. Yeah, I'll probably, take you're probably not much. A bit, and you can jump as well, so probably you're not that far off it. I reckon our yeah. tallest in the league would be close to 7 foot. Probably Max Gorn would be close to 7 foot. Max Gorn. Did yeah. you go through, like, like with, like, maturity, have you gone through different growth spurts at different times, or did you grow all at once, or, like... Were you yeah, I was a late grower. Um, yeah. I had about... It was, like, a year where I grew a good, like, four inches. Um... Then I mean, yeah, I was a late grower, you know, growing all, all through my junior career, I had, mm. I was like six foot and under, so I had, you know, guard skills. And then as I grew, you know, I still had those guard skills, which helped. So you know, me and Giddy are very, very similar mm. in that aspect. You know, he was yeah. a late grower as well. So, um, you know, we're like bigger guards now that can handle the ball. So, you know, uh, you know definitely a, a late grower. It's going to be a good combo for the years to come. Yourself and Giddy, mm. pump to say it, pump to say it at the footy tomorrow night. We'll get you down in the rooms. Thanks so much for jumping on. Good no to worries. chat. Hope you like the super boost. It was great. You can take these great. home with you. I reckon you probably got Gids covered in the footy, the footy <laughs> game as well. So that was t- you lost some tricky cards. Yeah, in some there. tough ones in there. Yeah. But Gids is coming to the footy tomorrow night as well. So yeah, uh, it's good to be, have you guys back home in Australia. Can't wait for the World Cup as well. Appreciate Hopefully it. We get a medal and go from there. Thanks for having me. Enjoy. Thanks, it. Let's go to the gold. Right? Hey, gold. Yeah. Yeah. Gold would be great. Be done.